again, um, sharing God's word. Um, and we had a great time of worship once again. Um, and it's always nice to refer to the worship song because the one that we that we sang said that God is mighty to save. All right. Um, and it is true, Jesus is mighty to save. Um, and there's nobody um, that God cannot save. There is nobody that God's grace cannot bring back. Um, so it doesn't matter how far we may feel we are from God. It doesn't matter how far we are from God. Um, the power of God um, is mighty to save anyone and to bring anybody back. Um, so it's, it's a great reminder um, of what Christ has done for us. And we can't take it for granted. Um, we cannot take for granted what Jesus has done for us. Um, and there are many people in the world today that are dying for that faith. Um, there are many people in the world today that are being persecuted for that faith. There are many people in the world today that are losing their life for Jesus. What we take for granted by gathering together this morning is costing people their lives, literally. Um, and that ties in with our message this morning, which is um, on, on faith. <laughs> So we're starting a new series on faith um, and the persecution and the suffering and the tragedy that other Christians are experiencing in the world today ties in with that. I read a story the other day of, I think it's in India, of a mother, a father, and I think their three-year-old son being jailed for their faith. They were accused of conversion, of converting other people into Christianity, and the mother, the father, and the son were jailed for their faith. They, they, the, the countries in West Africa where Christians are being murdered and killed by Islamic extremists, um, the, the Christians being persecuted. In China, um, they, they now have to run underground churches in their homes. Um, so what we take, the <coughs> gathering that we take for granted um, is costing people their lives. And these people are standing firm in these difficult times uh, because of their faith. Um, and it ties in again with the message we have this morning, which is the message on faith. So let's not take for granted the opportunity to gather together. Let's not take for granted the opportunity to worship and to glorify God. Um, because, like I just said now, it is something that is costing other people um, their lives and their livelihoods. Um, and so we just want to give God all the glory and all the, all the praise. I'm going to pray for them and remember them and ask that the Lord will strengthen them um, in, in their difficult times. The passage I'm going to be reading from is from Hebrews chapter 11. Um, and as we read Hebrews chapter 11 this morning, it's quite a lengthy passage, but we're going to go through it. As we read the passage this morning, there's some questions that we want to address. Um, the first question we want to address is, what is faith? Uh, what is faith? The second question is, what faith is not? So what is faith and what faith is not? Uh, the third question we want to answer is, why is faith important in the life of a Christian? Because as Christians and as followers of Jesus, we can't separate faith from being a believer in Christ. We can't separate faith from being a child of God. The fourth question we want to answer in the series in the next uh, couple of weeks is, how do we then build our faith? If we can't separate our existence as Christians from faith, how do we then build our faith? The Bible makes it very clear also um, that we cannot, without faith, we can't please God. Without faith, we can't please God. So how do we then build that faith? The fifth question I want to address in this series is, what are the barriers to faith? How do we put barriers in growing our own faith? And the final question I want to try and answer in this series is, what is the ultimate purpose of faith? Now, we won't answer all those questions this morning, but as we go along in the next uh, couple of weeks, the idea and the hope is that we answer some of those questions <laughs> through the word of God, and that God himself would um, enlighten us and help us to apply some of these things in, in our lives. So let's read Hebrews chapter 11, and then we'll go through the passage in detail. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, it starts by saying, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous 
when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he, could, he, would, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Verse 11, and by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise, who is God. Verse 12, and so from this one man, that is Abraham, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they were looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. That verse 19. Abraham reasoned, believed, that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. I'm going to jump to verse 23 very quickly. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict or command. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he chose, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Let me read that again. Moses regarded this grace for the sake of Jesus as of being of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he was looking ahead to his reward, his heavenly reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered. Why? Because he saw him who is invisible. That is, he kept his eye upon God. I'm going to jump again to 
verse 29. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. I'm going to go back again to verse 33. Uh, verse 32. What more shall I say? I don't have the time to tell, tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets. Listen to this. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Through faith they shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed or overcame foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others, though, who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection with Jesus. Some faced jeers, that's mockery, mockery and mocking, and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskin, destitute, that is homeless, persecuted and mistreated. Verse 38, the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in 